Well, hello there. Welcome back to Weekly CTI, you crazy so-and-sos. I'm so glad to have you today. We've got an interesting little thread for us to take a look at. Actually, a new malware called Xworm. Sounds like something from the late 90s that ESPN 8 would be putting on in the middle of the night, right? Welcome to the Xworms. Extreme Worm Sports. At least that's the kind of idea that goes to my head. So let's get to it, shall we? Here we are, the Hacker News. Xworm malware exploits Falina vulnerability in a new wave of attacks. That's that's going to be fun for a lot of people. If you don't remember Falina, it came out, I believe, last year. That was a fun one. That was a really good time. We'll learn a little bit more about that as we get down the road here. A little bit of disclosure here. Uh, you know, full transparency as we like to do here at Weekly CTI, is that uh, I didn't actually do as much researching and stuff as I normally do. It is Mother's Day weekend, and I have three kids and a wife and a mother and grandmothers and a bunch of people coming over. So we're just going to kind of hit the ground running with this thing and, and pick up it. It just looked interesting, so that's where we're at. Welcome to my show. It's going to be fun. Let's get back to it. All right, the Hacker News. So we've got Xworm. It is malware, <laughs> apparently, and uh, it exploits Falina. So we do have a lovely little obfuscated script here. I will do this. No, I won't. Yes, I will. There it is. You can kind of see this. This is a pull. Obviously, we're looking at Hacker News. We will get into the actual article that uh, brings us all this wonderful technical juiciness as we enjoy but we can see this is obfuscated JavaScript, eval function, packed. You know, I, I love when you see stuff like this. It's just so much fun. Uh, obfuscations are just really interesting to me. I, I spend a lot of time thinking about how could I obfuscate this? How could I make it get past EDR or AV or whatever, XDR or whatever the new AI ML? Could chat GPT know that this was a thing? I don't know, but it sure is interesting to think about. And then we have this deobfuscated PowerShell here. I move around like a like a, a manic person, don't I? <laughs> I just realized like I am jumping in and out of thoughts like I have some sort of issue going on. But if you take a look at uh, back here, come back my X equals active X object, which is funny, right? That is the kind of one thing I did pick up on this really quickly was that it's kind of funny. Whoever wrote this malware is, they're my kind of comedy. They're not my kind of morality, though. Does that make sense? So they're hysterical thieves that should be telling jokes in jail at this point because they do they do these things. So uh, X worm is that malware. <clears throat> Cybersecurity researchers have discovered an ongoing phishing campaign that makes use of a unique attack chain to deliver the X worm malware on targeted system. And of course, our good folks, our good friends over at Sur Securonix. I don't know why my brain was blurring the C out of that word, but Securonix, which is tracking the activity cluster under the name meme hashtag 4chan. I'm just going to say meme 4chan because that rolls off the tongue a whole lot better. So uh, instead of some of the attacks have primarily targeted manufacturing firms and healthcare clinics located in Germany. Okay, uh, maybe this is like first, you know, stage. It does say it's a new wave of attacks. So maybe this is like the, the first stage of, hey, we'll go after some low-hanging fruit. It's healthcare, it's manufacturing, you know, kind of in the vein of what we're going. Again, this is all speculation. I couldn't swear to any of that. It's just interesting to me that they have primarily targeted specifically manufacturing firms and healthcare clinics in the German area, in, in Germany. In the German area. <laughs> yeah, in that German region where mostly Germans live. It's you maybe you've heard of it. It's called Germany. Um uh, all's quiet, right? Um so yeah, that I just was found that interesting. We won't get into this. Let's go ahead and get into the article. I will click through here to the uh, I, I for whatever cannot say Securonix. I'm sorry, Securonix. I will say Securonix a lot now. So that when I see the word Securonix, I will say Securonix because Securonix just rolls off my tongue after saying Securonix like a thousand times. Securonix. Securonix? Let's increase the font. Enhance. Enhance. 
Uh, let's see. Secure Onyx Threat Lab Security Advisory. Latest update. Yep, yep, yep. Meme 4chan. Attack slash phishing campaign uses meme filled dot dot dot. TLDR. This is kind of the overview, right? Uh, what we do in there is where we do see some more of that obfuscation perfection that we do enjoy. It's just interesting stuff. To me, that's like the tech part. I mean, if you think of it this way, it's a problem to be solved. And clever puzzles like obfuscations, you know, they, they, they tease my brain and make me go, ooh, what's that you got there? That looks, that looks interesting. I'm intrigued. So that, that's, don't ever hear me say that I think these people are good. They shouldn't be doing this. But I see things like AMC. You know, let me get, uh, there we go. Like AMC, and then you got this big string. Uh, there's AMC again, or MC, right? MC. And you'll notice there's some weird characters here. We've got these replacements that are going on. Ooh, it's crazy. Then Choda Beam. Choda Beam, okay. Choda Beam and Z News TV and Choda Beam again, right? All text, wsscript.exe. There's a scheduled task. That's fun. Uh, create SC minute month. Okay, cool. Uh, 120 TN S cans update. So it looks like they are setting some persistence. Moving down into it. Here we go. The Securonix research team has noticed this is happening. Meme 4chan, leveraging other usual meme filled PowerShell code. Oh, leveraging rather unusual meme filled PowerShell code. Listen, if you're going to do stuff, you probably want to have a good time at it a little bit, right? I mean, what are you going to do? I, I get, I, I kind of do the same thing. I just don't do it to steal from people. Um, or, you know, in, I say, steal. I, I, I honestly, I don't really know. I assume that malware is stealing, but it could be doing other things. Uh, let's see here. Today we'll dive into this campaign because it's looking for that X-worm payload, infect its victims, taking an in-depth te technical analysis of the entire attack chain, starting with the phishing. I, I always love the, the word attack chain. I don't know if you're ever a fan of Firefly. Um, great show. Definitely did not get the time it deserved on television. Um, but there was a, an, a character in there, and his name is Jane Cobb. And there was a time when he was kind of second in command, and everyone was questioning his orders, and they said something about the chain. He said, do you know what the chain of command is? The chain of command is the chain I go get and beat you with until you recognize who's in command here. That's what I think of when I hear the term attack chain. Jane Cobb's going to go get his, go, go get his chain. You don't want that. He shows up. He's a large man and he's relatively cantankerous in a lot of ways. Uh, let's see here. Uh, obfuscations, heavily obfuscated mail, X worm payload. Today we'll dive into the campaign. Well, I hope so. The attack chain leveraging x worm payloads was first reported by threat uh, researchers at Elastic. Today we will look at some new techniques or new unique payloads along with new obfuscation methods used by attackers that were not covered before. Excellent. We've got samples. We've got IOCs. We've got detections. We've been tracking this since the start of the campaign. When I say we, I mean Securonics, right? Because I can say Securonics now because I've cured myself of the huh, horrible disease of leaving out secure part of Securonics. I want to just say, uh, now I can't go back. <laughs> I was going to say Securonics, but yeah, it's not right. Uh, let's see. Attack begins with a malicious Microsoft Office Word document. <laughs> it's a tale as old as time, kids. That's right. You know, there's a person gets up in the morning, they brush their teeth, they put on their clothes, head to work, open the old email, and they see, oh, what's this? I've got an email here. A Word document? Well, heck yes. I can't wait to click on that. And of course, I'm sure they're using some uh, reason, but this is actually starting to make me think, okay, that's right. Falina was involved with this. Let's get down into the business, shall we? Oh yeah, because here we go. Look at this. Microsoft Word attachments uh, have fallen out of favor since Microsoft decided to disable mac macro execution by default. I wonder why they did that. Maybe because macros are like a really easy way to, you know, I don't know, attack people if they're just running basically a programming language whenever you open something. That, 
Whose idea at Microsoft was it to go, you know, those macros are really handy. We should just make them go by default. But that's what happened. And then they said, oh, that that's real bad. We changed that. So we dive into the day. The samples collected attempted code execution from a macro-less document is still very much in use today. So you're, it's a catch-22. You're rock meet hard place, right? You're in the middle of it. That's fun. Because we now have a macro-less document. So basically, I send you a document and your host. I send you a document with a macro in it and your host. So here you go, everybody. Turn your computers off and read a book and go outside. Fly a kite. Play with your kids. Something. Because computers apparently have no safety at all. The attack chain overview. Meme 4chan campaign can, or follows a rather unique attack chain consider, consisting of both PowerShell and JavaScript execution originating from this malicious word document file. C sharp code. You ever ask yourself, do I need to know programming to be in cybersecurity? The answer is complex. And I have typically answered it with a complex answer, which is, yeah, no. No, yeah? So yes and no, right? It helps a lot. Is it necessary to get into it? Meh, probably not. Is it extremely useful? Heck yes. Especially things like C-sharp. Why is C-sharp cool? Because guess what? Microsoft builds their stuff. That's .NET is C-sharp, right? I think so. I'm not a C-sharp developer, but I think .NET and C-sharp are in some way, shape, or form married. It's, it's kind of like Microsoft's implementation of C, I think. Something to that effect. So learn some C-sharp. Man, you could be a pretty dangerous person in the cybersecurity space. Take that or leave it as you will. I'm offering no career advice at this point. <laughs> Let's see here. Uh, we got a C-sharp execution contained within the main PowerShell script. So we've got a PowerShell script. So maybe knowing some PowerShell is also a useful thing. Because here's the thing. If I were a security specialist and I received a, a, a call from you know one of my users and they were like, hey, I got this thing. I think something weird's going on or maybe something did fire off or whatever, right? Something indicated to me that there was something hinky happening. Being able to look at the PowerShell and go, whoa, okay, this is odd. I understand a bit about PowerShell. You get the idea. It's extremely helpful to know some scripting and maybe even a little like proper like compiled programming to understand how these things kind of work together. Don't get me wrong, not a dev. This guy, not a dev, as I smack my mic. Not a dev, right? But I know a little bit, I'm learning, I'm learning more. And looking at this kind of stuff and trying to rebuild some of these things for like red team tooling, build your own tools kind of stuff that emulate some of the, some of the tactics and techniques and procedures that get used by actual threats. That seems like a bit of a marketable skill to me. Just saying, just throwing that out there. That's just one guy talking on the internet. C-sharp code contained within the main PowerShell script is used to deliver the final payload, which ends with Xworm v31 execution. That's a weird way of writing that sentence. Below is a diagram of the overall attack chain. Good, let's do that. Phishing email, as it always starts, right? Details for booking.docx. So we've got the Word file that they mentioned before. Then we've got CVE 2022-3190, which is Falina, down, which downloads this atom.xml file, which has PowerShell execution with inside of that, right? Because you see that right there. And then it kind of forks off into two main functions that it does. Let's start off in the top here because this is all PowerShell. And then we've got the .NET C-sharp stuff which is what I would think. All right, so we've got the PowerShell things that it does, which are AMC bypass, right? Hey, if you're running an AV or EDR, just don't look. Or even Defender, just just turn that off. Don't even look. That's completely useless. Hey, Defender, by the way, why don't you go ahead and have a seat underneath the shade tree with a Coke and a smile yourself. Let's go ahead and turn that off too. And then we've got a scheduled task for persistence. We want to stick around because that's what APT does. Uh, they like to hang out as long as they possibly can. Then we've got these EXEs that happen, process injection, registservices.exe. 
Uh, then we got the Xworm v3.1 executable that goes off. And then we've got C2 communications over port 3000 to 212.87.204.83. Don't go there, right? It's probably things to stop you from like making it a problem for them anyway. But hey, you know, you don't want to get infected with anything. Sandbox environments, ladies and gentlemen. Sandboxes. That's what you do this stuff in. All right, initial infection. Yeah, how do they get this? How does this darn thing work? You got you got no malicious macros. You got no macros, malicious or otherwise. And yet, you're smoking me? How does that work? Well, as with many modern attacks, we see these days the meme 4chan typically begins with a phishing email. The attack appears to be patterned after a known, uh, a known fake hotel reservation phishing scheme. Hey, thanks for booking with us. Here are your... Here's your information. The goal is to get the company employee to open the attached phishing document, which will kick off the initial code execution portion of the attack. Typically, the subject body even and even contents of the lure attachment are designed to create a sense of urgency. Welcome to Social Engineering 101. Ladies and gentlemen, right? You create a sense of urgency, a fear of missing out, a fear of reprisals, something socially unacceptable. And it puts pressure on people. It makes their minds go, oh, man, I, I probably need to look into this. I probably need, just need to say yes to this. I just need to go along. I need to go, you know, go, as I go along to get along. That's the kind of thing that gets preyed upon when it comes to a lot of social engineering. Now, some of it is like a reward system, like, hey, you'll be rewarded if you do this. You know, there are positive ways in which to get people to click on things and stuff like that. But a lot of times it's just, urgency and fear like do this now of course it could be urgency of click now to claim your prize you get the idea you know so let's see here uh continuing on oh i'm i'm in the wrong thing there we go let's do this there we go uh phishing email details so we got a reservation for a room uh brief message in the body contains a message about re booking requests email appears to be from uh, Zoe at Boeingslaw.com. Don't go there again. Uh, however, after examining the header, it's actually from a Gmail ad address, panel new 12 at Gmail. Don't don't go there. Or don't send them email. Don't get in contact with them. Sandboxes. Uh, what makes this particular phishing campaign especially interesting is the fact that the target email belonged to a German company involved in manufacturing. Right. Why are you sending... If you're in a manufacturing firm, why would you be receiving rando, you know, booking emails? That doesn't make sense from a hotel. Uh, maybe if you're going on a conference or something, but okay. Uh, this could indicate the, targeters, uh, the attackers are not only specifically targeting hotels, but blasting out phishing emails using a generic corporate email list and hoping for the best. So they got their fingers crossed to bolster this theory. Another phishing email. Our team intercepted was from the same Gmail address and contained the subject Urgent booking for a honeymoon. How many people are... And look at this. Was targeted to a small German hospital clinic. I guess everybody there is getting married. It's just like this large polyamorous German hospital clinic. They're all decided to marry each other. And so everybody needs to know about the honeymoon they're going on. Like, <laughs> If you're not going on a honeymoon, why would you open an email that contained information about booking a hotel for a honeymoon. I'm just going to delete. That's just me, though. What do I do? Yeah. So most of the phishing email analyzed by the team following the same or followed the same pattern. We'll dive into these in depth. All right. Stage one. Email attachment analysis. Booking for DOCX. So uh, throughout the rest of this article, we'll follow the attack chain of uh, one document. Throughout the others, uh, uh, though others were overall similar and produced the same final results. So they did find multiple samples apparently, but you know, why belabor the point when one sample will basically give you the gist of all the others? And this is the details for booking.docx, which is a Word document file. When opened, it prompts the user um, to do something, right? It actually says that there is externally linked files, and this takes us to the Falina stuff. Let's look up Falina in case we don't remember that. Let's see here, Falina attack. Or vulnerability, I guess, would be the better way of putting it. 
Hello, computer, thank you for joining us. Let's go to Blackberry Labs here, number one in the hit list. Uh, remind us a little bit about Falina. It, it had something to do with, like, there's this MDST system that works with, um, you can add in some kind of, why is this, I hate stupid cookie exceptions. Isn't there a way to make it automatically do that? There's a plugin or something. I want to say there's a plugin or something. Anyway, I'm sure that I'm just butchering Falina. Easy to exploit. Microsoft released updates, so there is updates for it. Which makes you wonder why this is still happening. Sometimes we don't update, right? Any unpatched versions of Microsoft Office are still available. Let's see here. Here it is. The Microsoft Support Diagnostic Tool Protocol. That's what it uses. MSDT.exe. Typically used to collect information and report system crashes to Microsoft support, but an MSDT protocol link can also be used to force execution of an attacker supplied PowerShell command without additional interaction. Isn't that fun? It says Falina may require a user to open a Microsoft Office document such as a Word DOCX file containing malware delivered via email or other online communication channels or even via USB device. Crazy, but it oh here here's where it gets fun, here's where it gets fun, but it may not require a click. Dang! If the malicious file is in RTF format, for instance, the code could run via the Preview tab in Explorer without the user ever having opened the file. Either way, the malware the malroid the malware payload <laughs> the malware payload is activated through MSDT. So there's Falina. There is a, a patch for it. But this is why we're seeing this lovely little box. Right? Yeah. Right? It says, this document contains links that may refer to other files. Do you want to update the document with the data from the linked files? And you'll notice that it says, no, by default. No, I don't want to do that. No. Anyway. Details for booking.docx links files prompt linked files prompt. That's what it looks like. If either of the prompts are click, oh, that's fun. The prompt closes and we're presented with what looks like a stolen images of a bank debit card as well as default license. That's right, because we don't, it said you don't even have to click on this thing. You can just open a preview. That sucks. Uh, both the cards appear to be from unique French citizens. Document contains no macros or discernible P code, which means the macro ex execution is not the attack vector for the phishing documents. There's the stuff, the document itself, the booking.docx. Rather than using macros to execute, this document uses known vulnerability, Falina. Uh, let's see here. Vul vulnerability works. Oh, it goes into telling us how this thing works, and we already looked it up, but now we know. In this example, the document footer contains shape contained a shape object that was used maliciously. The shape object used the footer relationship file footer2.xml.rels to fetch external objects. And there they are. You can kind of see that highlighted there a little poorly, but it is there. We have target equals HTTPS and then blah, 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 dot blogspot.com forward slash atom.xml. We have this other one, which is, which looks like a, uh, like a GUID dot ersfiles dot com dot ugd then another rando string with dot docx so it's grabbing an xml file and a docx file and there's the links to that stuff right there uh let's see here this reference appears to be an empty microsoft document file containing a single picture with a small white square same execution tactics happens again with the same referenced blogspot url as original all right, the other is the phishing document references the atom.xml file hosted on ERS files, a public file sharing service. Those are fun. Files redirected to another URL, which downloads and executes a PowerShell script. That's not good. PowerShell code directly contained within the atom.xml file. And that basically takes us to dun -dun -dun -dun, stage two PowerShell execution. PowerShell that gets executed at this stage is semi-obfuscated. That's not too bad. It's probably just for, you know, bypassing AV and whatnot. 
The code is rather interesting and contains memes, crass variable names, and comments throughout. So you'll have to pardon the use of the blur tool throughout this next series of figures as we go through it. I mean, I'm, I'm now I'm interested, right? I'm really interested at this point. Let's see, what do we got here? Cola Burr Bum Bum. That's a fun variable name. Cola Burr Bum Bum. <laughs> I mean, that's pretty smart now for obfuscations. I, I've I've made obfuscated variable names myself, and usually I just create some sort of random thing, and then you got to remember all that. It kind of gets difficult. So using names that actually make some kind of sense, and then there's all these weird characters. I wonder if they're doing like character like changing if it's using like a different character sets. I don't know how you do that though. I have to I need to write that down. I want to figure that one out. Uh, what do we got here? Pentagon, return Pentagon. Just another. It's like a, a nuclear diffusion. I mean, it is funny. Cola Burr Bum Bum. That's my favorite right now. Meme man. It's going to C program data forward slash or backslash mean man. Goodness gracious. Uh, there's that Choda Beam thing again. What the heck is Choda Beam? That's a weird one. Uh, any other cool stuff? More meme stuff. Meme 2026. There's that schedule task. Sexy Bun Bun. Funny. The file will start blank to your computer. <laughs> <laughs> I only can imagine what that means and says. All right, let's see here. Script spy starts by stopping the reg services and MS build processes. We get into why that's important in a minute. After that, a directory inside C program data is created, right? The meme man, which is where most of the malware staging from this point will happen. Nuclear diffusion contains a C sharp script, accomplishes a few tasks. There is a deobfuscation function called whatever that all is, which is used to hex decode some of the other variables later on. Later on, Two additional variables, each with their own PowerShell code, are contained inside the AMC variable and the JJJI function. AMI, the variable contains a long hexadecimal string, triple hex encoded. Once decoded, we're presented with a simple obfuscated AMC bypass technique, which uses Matt Graber's reflection method. To I will... Go here. Ah, not what I wanted to do. Stop. Stop. There we go. Ha ha ha. Open that in a new tab. And then that's that's a great that's a great repo name we got going on there. Secure this shimmy Christmas. Right? Uh, I will just go ahead and star that for myself. So I can look at that later. Because that's gonna be fun. Uh, let's see here. Instead for the current PowerShell, blah, blah, blah. So the AMC bypass, bypass method for current PowerShell session will prevent subsequent code from being scanned for malicious content, which is why we do AMC bypass stuff. There's tons of them out there. So I always like to gather that kind of stuff up. I don't know about yourself. Ooh, we are running high on time. I might need to break this up into two episodes because how, how far are we along? Man, we're not even like halfway down this page. We'll, we'll finish this up. And then I'll call it, and then we'll do next week, we'll finish, or maybe I'll just do it and release it. Whatever. It does need to be a part two, because this is getting long. We're already, already almost at 30 minutes. So let's see here. Uh, next, a registry key is created. As you do, looking at that, in proc server 32, very well named, with a default value of I don't exist DLL. Now, nah, there's nothing to see here. Move it along, people. Move it right along. This registry also assists in disabling AMC by overriding Microsoft Defender com object for AMC and point and points it to a DLL that doesn't exist. Well, that's smart. Let's see here. Dollar sign DEF or DEF. This variable contains PowerShell code and once again disables AMC using the same two methods as before, just obfuscated differently. I wonder why the double AMC bypass thing. Maybe if one doesn't work, the other might. But it's using the same one, right? Using the same two methods, just obfuscated differently. So maybe, right, yeah, but it's in the same code. So I don't understand why they would do that. Additionally, defender exclusions are created for pretty much everything on the host using an add MP preference PowerShell module, which we can see. Yeah. 
Exclusions, exclusions. Look at that. Exclude extension dot bat. Excludes ext extension ppam. XLS, DOCX, bat. Again, why did they do bat twice? Weird. Uh, EXE, VBS, JavaScript, exclude path C, exclude path D, exclude path E. <laughs> Basically, exclude everything I'm doing. Pay no attention to the man behind the curtain, damn you. All right. Uh, we've got um, exclusion process of Explorer, kernel 32. We don't want you looking at these things while we're doing all our sorts of bad stuff. We got these MP preferences all done. Okay, you can look, there's lots of stuff in here, man. This is a treasure trove of what you can do if you're doing threat emulation to try to help, you know, continue unannounced, right? Great stuff. Horribly done, but there you go. Looks like they're also adding a user down here. Net user system 32. Wow, that's fun. Net user system 32, one, two, three. That's just adding the password. Uh, so you got the forward slash add, then you got the one, two, three, which sets the password to one, two, three, then adds the local group administrators, and then adds it to remote desktop users. What else? Net stop, WD, NIS service. I don't know what that service is off the top of my head. WD, NIS, SVC. What is that one? WID. I can never, WD, NIS service, WD, NIS service. Is it service or SVC? I'm horrible at this. My brain does not work. Yeah, it is SVC, SVC. What is this? Oh, it's the Defender service, dirt. <laughs> I crazy today, y'all. I am cray to the Z. Anyway, uh, we delete when defend, as you do, and then set the firewall off for all profiles. These are all, this is, I am stealing like all of this action for my own like red team stuff. Doing all that stuff. I, I, I really want to kind of, I've been playing around with Golang a lot lately. I've kind of, I know you're like, Daniel, I thought you were a NIM guy. Yeah, I liked NIM. Notice an emphasis on the past tense. I liked it. There are a lot of things I still like about it. Documentation on that Joker is just not great. I need something with more help. I'm not I'm not a good developer. I don't know that stuff very well. So I need very good examples. I need very good like descriptions and stuff. And I just wasn't getting it with them. It was a, it was a real slog. Uh, so I decided to go back to Golang because I'd fiddled with that a little bit. And I'm gonna I'm gonna get like checked out on Golang. I'm gonna stop using Python for a lot of stuff and just make sure I write everything in Golang from now on until I get like really good at it. That's what I want to do. That's, that's, that's personal goal right here for Dan. All right. So then it goes on to tell us uh, exactly what it does, which we already read and looked at. Oh, there's this Chota beam thing again, moving through the C sharp script. We run into another obfuscated variable called Chota beam, which contains a long encoded string further down. We see it leveraging the, not like the British pound sign. What is that? Uh, but it's triple, whatever that is. And it's a function which decodes it. And we can see some PowerShell obfuscations going on in here with this Magala. Okay, I got to know what this... Oh, de uh, deobfuscated code behind Chota Beam decoded. All right, there's that nuclear diffusion. I'm uh, like, Chota Beam seems like something. What do we got going on in here, though? The deobfuscated code. This code leverages the WS script dot shell com object to execute nuclear diffusion variable, which we'll see written to disk later on. This takes us through the first half of the original PowerShell script, which is a great stopping spot for us because we are now at 34 minutes. All right, we'll take a look at this really quickly. What do we see? <clears throat> we see Cola Burbum Bum coming back in, Cypher Deptography. And nuclear diffusion, there's nuclear diffusion. There's all the replacements that go on. All, all slave, all slave backup. There's a backup. Okay, backup hotel all dot blogspot dot com forward slash Adam XML. And then there's this just random string. Maybe this is hex or something. I don't know what's going on here. Why my X left me? <laughs> it's <laughs> so it's a. Uh... What do you call that? A uh, comment, right? You got a comment here. Why my ex left me? Hina gul, hina gul gul. 
gonna Google bull bully. This is funny. Just this stuff is crazy. Shakalaka boom boom. <laughs> Why my ex left me? The oh man, man yeah, yeah I get it. Step sis help me. That's weird. I noticed there's a bit of the blur tool going on here. All right, does it tell us what it does? All right, we're gonna look and see what what it does because I'm um, I'm kind of losing my mind on this. I'm I'm running a little long in the tooth on it. So code referred in the half of the script is written to disk and saved in the meme man directory as a cipher deptography dot tilde plus tilde using PowerShell io dot file write all text method. Next, take a look at what's hidden behind. Uh, the all save variable once decoded using the same method we use to decode the Chota beam variable, we're faced with a hugely obfuscated JavaScript one-liner as seen in the figure below. More code of man. If you want to get into, so this is what malware analysis people do for a living. They look at this stuff and they de-obfuscate this mess of spaghetti and figure out what it does, which is really kind of cool and fun. You know, it's kind of what caught, uh, got me hooked on John Hammond's stuff back in the day. He was doing a lot of that because that's what he uh, kind of does with Huntress. So I was I was kind of glued to that. The 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 really fun part of of doing some blue team stuff, I think, at least in my opinion, at least that's one of them. So there's the deobfuscated PowerShell right there. It says once decoded, the script behind all save is similar to that of Chota Beam. However, it appears to be invoking a variable that referenced the main script, which points to Adam.xml at a different backup hotel blockspot. We saw that. Unfortunately, we were not about to pull this script as the blockspot URL was taken offline at some point. However, we can speculate that it is similar to that of the original Adam.xml script. Next down the list, we see the repeating function, probably for redundancy, where the shakalaka boom boom variable is decoded. In the end, carving through the layers of obfuscation once again, it retrieves yet another atom.xml file from the following URL, which is the 3000 all fit they it to blockspot.com forward slash atom.xml. Persistence is established by writing the obfuscated JavaScript code to the disk and saving it to znews tv forward slash or backslash update escan.js using the write all text method from PowerShell. Uh, a schedule task is then created called Escan Diseldo Dis 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 Eldu Dis Eldu I like it. Referencing the newly created file that runs once every 200 minutes, and there's that scheduled task. The next level of persistent happens during the last four lines of the code, which are uh, where all the content from the staging directory, the meme man directory, is copied to the user startup directory. This is defined using get folder path startup. Okay, gotcha. Lastly, the script deletes the C-sharp decode script or any file ending in tilde um, plus tilde. So tilde plus sign tilde from the start directory. Whoosh! Dude, there is so much stuff going on inside of this thing. The obfuscations, the, the different languages. We've seen PowerShell, we've seen JavaScript, we've seen C-sharp. Uh, crazy obfuscation after crazy obfuscation, reaching out to different areas on the internet, redundancies, and of course, some pretty good chuckles from our threat actor there. At least they're giving us some entertainment while we look through their malware. All right, kids, I'm going to call this an episode because now I'm creeping on 40 minutes, <laughs> but definitely come back for part two where we finish up and see what else we can learn from this X-worm craziness. That is going on. Uh, if you like the show, don't forget, find the like, subscribe, and all that other good stuff. Whatever. go. You know what to do. I don't got to tell you. I do have a buy me a coffee link down there, and that does help uh, because this costs me time and money uh, to do. Um, so any any little feedback into here is, is helpful. No pressure, though. If you can, it's great. If not, don't worry about it. Continue enjoying. Continue enjoying. If, not, if you don't enjoy, don't come back. Then you don't have to. I, I'm not offended. Thanks for watching, everyone. Until next time, stay safe.